It is near impossible for me to reproduce this break. Even Ronnie O'Sullivan would struggle. This is because there is no way of gauging and therefore controlling my input, such as the force and angle at which I strike the cue ball. I can only use my perception, which isn't accurate enough to recreate this specific set of conditions. Potentially a fraction of a degree, or 0.1 of a newton, might be the difference. Just by observing the yellow ball, it is apparent that each shot is different, and this particular dynamical system behaves differently each time. It is this sensitivity to the initial conditions which is a key feature of any Celtic dynamical system like this one. Here's a program that I made showing Celtic motion. It simulates a specific dynamic billiard called the Sinai billiard. A dynamic billiard is basically a dynamical system contained within a boundary. If I run the program, you'll see that a particle or object in this case, which you can think of as a cue ball, moves across a bounded space at a fixed speed and reflects off the inner and outer boundaries where the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. This is known as specular reflection. The Sinai billiard is characterised by these two specific boundary shapes, a circle enclosed within a square, which you can picture as a table with a cylinder fixed on top of its surface. This system is chaotic because even though the motion of the cue ball is complex, due to the fact that it can reflect off any one of the infinite sides of this inner circular boundary, its change in direction is fully dictated by logic, the concept of specular reflection in this case. So even though a chaotic system appears irregular, it is never influenced by randomness once the initial conditions have been applied. You'll notice here that I've used a random element, but it's only been used to generate a random direction vector for the initial angle of the cue ball. So the long-term behaviour of a chaotic system is unpredictable due to its complexity, but can be determined because of its dependence on the initial variables. The running of this dynamical system is determined by a single piece of information, a vector that controls for the initial direction of the cue ball. If I specifically set this to minus 0.8, 0 0.90 and click run, you'll see that the following happens. If I open a duplicate of this program with the exact same initial direction vector and again click run, you'll see that the second cue ball will replicate the exact path of the first. So the behaviour of any chaotic system is fully controlled by its input. Changing the initial input of a chaotic dynamical system, even by a marginal amount, radically alters the long-term behaviour. If I keep the direction vector the same for the first program, but alter the X component, by 0 0.002 in the duplicate, you'll begin to see this time that the second cue ball travels along a different path. Each time the second cue ball collides with a boundary, there is a difference in its position and subsequent angle of reflection. It is the accumulation of these small yet increasing disparities which exacerbate the change in its behaviour as time progresses. And on that bombshell, I'm off to play some pool. Thanks for watching.